بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ مائی ڈیئر بردرز اینڈ سسٹرز ویلکم ٹو دا پروگرام پروگرام ان وچ ان شاء اللہ وی ول بی ڈسکسنگ ٹاپک کولڈ سیلف پیوریفیکیشن ادر وائز نون ایز تسکیہ نفس بفور وی گو ان ٹو ڈسکسنگ دیٹ آئی لائک ٹو انٹروڈیوس Uh, guest on the show today, uh, Zafar Majid. Zafar, thank you so much for again joining me uh, on this program. Jazakallah khair for inviting me again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to all our br- uh, dear brothers and sisters watching at home. Jazakallah khair, Brother Zafar. Uh, dear viewers, some of you may know that this is a series of programs we have been running discussing this topic, topic of self purification, the skia nafs. And uh, today is our uh, fourth program. And what, inshallah, w- what we will be doing is very briefly, especially for the benefit of uh, the viewers who have not seen the previous programs, is very briefly we are going to recap uh, the previous programs very, very quickly. And then, inshallah, uh, we will then move uh, forward. But before we do that, you may be asking yourself, Taskiya nafs, self-purification, what's it all about? Brother Zafar, tell us what's it all about. What are we talking about? Purification, we were just discussing before we come on air that it's not an option. It's something which is an obligation and a command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, pure, that purely uh, the souls that will be entering Jannah and will be successful are the ones who have purified themselves. As a matter of fact, uh, Brother Zafar, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mm-hmm. in the Quran Majid, Quran Hakim, mm-hmm. He commands, yeah, regarding purification, as you quite rightly said, this is something which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands that we should do. And what does uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the Quran? Let me give you what word to word the translation uh, of that. It's in Sipara 30, part 30, Surah 87, verse 14. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the nearest translation, certainly, so what does it start with? Certainly, certainly he attains success who gets purified. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, certainly he, when we say he, obviously we mean he stroke she, he stroke she attains success for sure who gets purified. So this topic of purification It's not something that, uh, you know, if we like, okay, we do it, and if we don't, then no harm, no. If we don't purify ourselves, if we don't try and understand uh, what is tasqiyah nafs, what is self-purification, then unfortunately we are going to have extreme difficulty attaining the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we talk about self-purification, tasqiyah nafs, The ultimate aim, the goal of doing this is for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And once you achieve the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then alhamdulillah, you have success both here and in the hereafter. Brother Zafar, uh, you know, just briefly tell us what is self-purification. Self-purification, my dear brothers and sisters, is a process of cleaning your body, your mind, your heart, and purifying it and ensuring that we free ourselves of all sins as bodily sins that we commit through our hands, eyes, ears and feet, uh, stomach, all the various body, bodily organs, uh, freeing our mind of all the sinful thoughts that occur in our mind and freeing ourselves of all the sinful desires and feelings that happen in our heart. And again, it's a very complete holistic sort of an approach Uh, one does not, uh, cannot happen without the other. So it's very interconnected, the mind, the body, and the heart to ensure that we end up with a purified soul. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Uh, brothers and sisters, this topic of self-purification, Taskiya Nafs, it's something certainly I've found that, you know, very few people know about it. And those who know about what is the ski and uh, self-purification, then unfortunately I see that they have the theory, but they have not put it into practice. 
so there's a big gap between where we are and where we're trying to get to. So for, as an example, as a Muslim, there are certain conditions we must fulfill as a Muslim in order to try and achieve success both here and in the hereafter. And those uh, four basic conditions were which, which we ought to have in us, and Alhamdulillah as a Muslim, we have, and those four things are, uh, keeping it brief, is number one, uh, uh, we should uh, abide to La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. So our belief should be that there's only one God, and the last messenger is our messenger, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So our belief is number one that we should have. And Alhamdulillah, as a Muslim, we have that. The second thing we ought to have is the fiqh. The fiqh meaning the do's and do nots of this religion. And Alhamdulillah, some of us uh, have more and some of us have less. But basic things, most of us, Alhamdulillah, we know what is haram, what is halal. Basic farayas we know. For example, we know we need to pray five times a day as an example. So fiqh, we have uh, some idea, most of us. That's the second thing. Third thing we, as a Muslim, should have in us is that we should have something called uh, striving, mujahida. Well, what do we mean by striving and mujahida? Okay, as an example, let's say I've accepted I'm a Muslim, alhamdulillah. La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. I subscribe to that. I also know, again, just as an example, that I need to pray five times a day, alhamdulillah. But unless there is some striving and mujahida in me, then the first two on their own, without me taking action on that, will not give me the desired result. So, mujahida and striving is the third thing that must be in us. And the fourth thing that should be in us is something called repentance, tawbah. And especially the month of Ramadan we are in, and we are now in the second hashra, the second ten days, then one of the things we, are, uh, we, we learn is that we should be constantly asking, repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asking for forgiveness. So repentance is the other thing uh, we should have part of the four things. So those four things in, uh, you know, in basic form we have. But the problem we have is that we have these four things and what we're trying to arrive is, is we're trying to arrive at the, at the conclusion of being a Muslim. We're trying to arrive at trying to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the ultimate aim and ultimate game. But how do we go about trying to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the nearest uh, understanding, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, to please me, what do you need to do? Follow the teachings and the ways of the Prophet of your time. So for us, the Prophet is no other than our great Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we follow the teaching and the way of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that is the aim we're trying to achieve. And we're starting by having the four conditions in us. But somewhere in the middle, we are lost. Because for most of us, and I'm talking about myself first, we're not achieving the ultimate aim, the ultimate four objectives as a Muslim. And those four ad objectives is that we should obey the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and give preference to what the commands are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should give preference to the way of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa We should deal with the creation compassionately and we should be in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all of the time. Again, these are just bullet points I'm giving you. These are things we covered in our last program, but for the benefit of the new viewers. So these are our ultimate goals. So we start off with our, what the conditions are to arrive at these goals. So we have these two posts. We have the starting post, and this is where we're trying to get to. But somewhere in the middle, there is something missing. And that's something missing. Unless we grasp that, then we can't achieve the four objectives. And what's missing, my dear brothers and sisters, is this tasqiyah nafs, is the self-purification. And this is what this program is focused on, to try and understand that. So just sit back, relax, watch the program. And towards the end of the program, if you have a pen and paper handy, 
I'll be giving you a website where you'll be able to make complete sense of what we are talking about today. And not only make sense, you'll be able to practically uh, follow the instructions which you are trying to give here. So, inshallah, what I'm going to ask uh, Brother Zafar to do is uh, just briefly cover the last uh, uh, few programs we've done just to bring us up to where we are now and then inshallah we'll start uh, from where we left off from the last program. So we're just going to cover and what we're going to start off with inshallah is we want to understand very briefly, as I said we covered in the previous uh, uh, programs, is what is our journey, the journey of the human soul or journey of man or journey of a person. So I want to try and very briefly cover that. So I'm going to ask Brother Zafar to do that. And on the screen, inshallah, uh, I want to bring uh, a slide which shows us. So here, here's the slide. Okay. So uh, Brother Zafar, uh, starting <coughs> from the left-hand side of the screen, I want you to very briefly talk through. As I said, uh, my dear viewers, uh, we have covered this in detail. So today is just a recap on, 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 on this uh, section. Okay. Uh, okay, we're just going to go back to the slide. Okay. Jazakallah. Uh, again, conscious of time, I appreciate there's going to be many brothers and sisters who have been following this in the last couple of weeks and may find that this stuff is a repetition for them. But at the same time, we are also where there may be new, brand new people tuning in and probably wondering what, what is this diagram. So we are just going to touch on the main salient points. First and foremost, this is our journey. The journey of man and jinn, whoever has breathed on this earth and is yet to had, has been and has yet to come. Uh, in the first instance, as you can see on the left-hand side, it shows you that there was a period of non-existence for the creation and only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala existed. That's unknown period. After that, uh, on the next uh, section, it was when the world of spirits was created. Our ruh was created. Every single person who has breathed uh, in the past or is still breathing now and will come in the future. The, ru the ru spirits were created simultaneously at one time where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked us, who is your Lord? And we all replied, man and jinn, that, Ya Allah, you are our Lord. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, okay, if you genuinely uh, and sincerely believe that, I would like to test you on this earthly plane that we are now currently existing on here you can see the planet earth where we have been sent sent for a short test uh, whether it's 50 years 60 years 100 years however many long years that you live at the end of the day as we all aware we all have to die we will taste the kullu nafsin zaikat al mot we will taste death we are going to then go into our graves this is known as the world of barzak and in that world of barzak what uh, you will sort of experience again will be based on the deeds, the good or the bad deeds that you have done on uh, uh, while you were living on earth. If you have been a, a good person and your good deeds have outweighed your bad deeds, your grave will become a sort of a segment of paradise where you will be resting nicely until the day of judgment. And if alternatively you've had a very wretched life where you've been a wretched person, with committing a lot of bad deeds, then you will be experiencing some of the torments of the hellfire by being punished in your grave. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the punishment of the grave. MashaAllah. So, as, uh, uh, mashallah, uh, uh, and then we move on from there, as you can see. Uh, the next uh, item there is the Day of Judgment. Uh, and Day of Judgment, again, for someone who has passed the test here and with the mercy and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Day of Judgment for those people will be very light, very light questioning. They'll be given more or less, you know, a VIP treatment. And from there onwards, inshallah, they will be taken swiftly to their uh, abode. And as we see on the screen, the next uh, slide is, is heaven, on heaven. the top. Uh, you will see the purified soul will enter paradise and paradise is something one can talk about for probably years and still never get you know all the beautiness uh, you know uh, into our minds so it's a, such a wonderful place place which has already been created we learn Allah SWT has already created these things waiting for uh, the, the, the the purified person the person who has uh, become uh, successful uh, and unfortunately if you look again on the screen I'm just going to bring uh, on the screen so 
uh, if you see on the bottom of the screen is where, you know, if uh, the person has been, as Brother Zafar said, a wretched person and they have failed their test and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not forgiven them, then as soon as they die and they enter their grave, then unfortunately it's bad news upon bad news upon bad news and it gets worse and worse and worse and their ultimate abode is no other than hellfire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prevent and forbid us for, from that. So this is just, uh, again, uh, a quick whiz through as to uh, what we call journey uh, of man or journey of the human soul. Now, interestingly, if you look at the bottom of the screen, this is what we call a one-way journey, no return, no second chance. You know, it's not like us going from uh, uh, England to Pakistan and, you know, if we get fed up, uh, it's too hot and the electric's gone and the gas is shortage and the people are giving me trouble and the bathrooms are not very good. I quickly jump on the plane and come back to the UK because I, I can't hack it. It's also not like a so, university or college test so, which you can read. So I'm just being uh, informed that uh, to zoom in a little, uh, one way journey, uh, no return, no second chance as you can see at the bottom. So this is, you know, once we're gone from here, as I said, it's not like going from England to Pakistan and if you get fed up and you don't like it, you can just return, come back. No, uh, it's, it's whatever we've done here, the results will come evident and the results will come evident as soon as we pass away. As soon as we pass away, the results, you know, are evident. So may Allah SWT give us success uh, here. So that's just a uh, uh, very uh, brief uh, uh, journey of man. So it's, you know, it's absolutely vital, my dear brothers and sisters, that we have to do everything in our power to ensure that we pass this test. We pass this test. Because failing this test is not an option. Because if we fail this test, then what's in store for us is just a nightmare. So we have to do everything possible. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the merciful, to the nearest meaning we learn, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you walk to me, I come running to you. You give me your hand, I give you my arm. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is waiting for us to amend our way and go towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And shaitan whispers, and unfortunately sometimes we get caught in shaitan whispers, and instead of turning right, we end up turning left. So this is what we need to do. Very briefly, uh, Brother Zafar, I'm just going to bring up on the screen what does our life, our life on average consists of 60 years, 70 years, if you're lucky. Mm -hmm. If you're unlucky mm -hmm. and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, only has uh, a lot less years for you, you may get two years, you may get 10 years. Mm -hmm. So there's no restriction on when death can come to you. But I just want to cover what does an average 60 years mean in terms of the time that we have to ourselves. And interestingly, when this uh, slide comes on, I'm just going to get this slide on now. Uh, see what the 60 years mean for us. Okay. Uh, again, that's based on an average life. These days, what is the average? Are you, how many times do we hear about people dying in their 30s and 20s? And, a lot. You know, of so, you so know. here's a pie chart, Brother Zafar, and it's broken up into different uh, segments. And the first biggest segment, the sort of uh, grayish uh, color on the right-hand side, uh, before I bring what that is, you know, uh, so, okay, there you go. Yeah, again, 22 years of our 60-year our average life is spent sleeping. So if we can quickly whiz through this, Brother Ramzan, because again, time is critical, uh, because I'm conscious we did spend a lot of time on this last week. Uh, 11 years, uh, 13, 13 years. years is uh, childhood. And then you've got work and education. If you go to university, college, 19 years of that is spent in 15. education. 15 years. I think my eyes are up. Going up. <laughs> You're getting old. <laughs> okay. okay. And going on to the next section, uh, if you can just bring up the uh, bullet point for that, it shows you in an average lifespan. Again, <laughs> needs no explanation. <laughs> bath, toilet, grooming, whatever it is that you spend time doing in the bathroom, that takes up two years of our time. And then on the next section, it actually tells you that we actually spend about a year of our uh, life in anxieties and problems. And I think in this day and age of uh, stress and hectic lifestyles that we all lead, it's going to be a lot more than that. <laughs> but interestingly, interestingly, the red uh, chunk, which we, I'm just going to highlight now, yeah. is what is the actual time left, you know, after all these other activities, what do we have left? 
six, six years. years. Out of the 60 years, we're only left with s about six years to ourselves. So isn't that six years worth spending in obedience to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the ways of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and, and interestingly, just on that pie chart, you know, the, you, we spend a year doing nothing. Allahu Akbar. A whole year goes in that 60 years doing so, absolutely So we basically nothing. throw away a, the chance of an eternal happiness in paradise for those six years of the dunya uh, of temporary enjoyments. Yep, yep. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. So, um, so that was the brief uh, overview of uh, you know, where our life is spent. Um, so what we want to now cover is, as I said, we just want to whiz through uh, what we covered last week. Uh, before we go on to the actual topic of today. Uh, okay, what we're going to cover is I'm going to bring a, another slide up, Brother Zafar, to try and understand where we are, where we are trying to get to, and where the obstacle is, where the hindrance is, where are we stuck. Uh, this next slide uh, shows us this journey. And unless, my brothers and sisters, we understand this journey as to where we are, where now and where we need to get to in our cycle, the 50, 60, 70 years of life or whatever you know, life we have. So where do we start, where we need to get to, and where the problem is in the middle? The next slide, inshallah, I'm going to bring up. Okay, this is what we call you know, the mountain diagram. And uh, where we actually need to get to is, I'm going to blow this up. Right. As I was briefly touching earlier on, Brother Zafar, yeah. as for a Muslim, we have four objectives which we ought to try and achieve. We ought to have the, the four objectives we ought to achieve. So, what are those four objectives? The, as you can see, the four objectives. It's giving preference to these things. So, I want you to yeah, briefly cover that. The four objectives, again, we c uh, covered this last week, so I'm not going to spend too much time on them uh, because I want to get on to the stuff for today's uh, uh, subject. First and foremost, we want to be ensuring that we are fulfilling the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of what He has prescribed for us, His commandments, in terms of how we live, the do's and don'ts of being a Muslim. Number two, he has given us an example of how we should live our life, who is our role model, who we should be following, and that is no other than the most beautiful, the most blessed example of human creation, our Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who is the role model that was given to us 1,400 years ago. And yet, what do we do today? We follow role models of dunya, film stars, pop stars. Uh, business people of the dunya that we aspire to become uh, astaghfirullah uh, then we have uh, the rights of the creation uh, whether it's your family members your husband wife your parents your brothers and sisters your neighbors your employers your employees basically whoever you deal with on a daily basis they have rights upon you and you have to fulfill your rights uh, for them and creation, very briefly, does not just entail human beings. It includes the animal kingdom. It includes the environment. And finally, once you achieve all these three objectives, it should lead you to the main uh, objective of being in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we should be of the mindset that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching me, He's hearing me, He is with me, and we want to spend every single moment of our life in God consciousness, in the presence of Allah, then if we have that mindset, then inshallah we will never commit any sin. MashaAllah. So those are the four objectives. Uh, what the ultimate aim for us is to try and achieve those four objectives. But uh, Brother Zafar, you know, are we achieving those four objectives? Are we giving preference to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His commands when we get commands from the dunya? from the shaitan, from our nafs. Do um, we always give preference to the, w to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Unfortunately no. not. Sometimes, you know, not. we fail. So that's objective number one. Objective number two is giving preference to the ways of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So when we get something which is different, do we turn our face to that or do we go towards that? Unfortunately, we send, you know, sometimes end up going towards uh, things which are against the teaching of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa 
So we're not fulfilling, we're not giving preference to the way of the Prophet ﷺ as well. Thirdly, as you mentioned, dealing with the creation compassionately. What do we mean by compassionately? Dealing with the creation compassionately, meaning that if we can't do good to the creation, we should not harm the creation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But what do we do? A lot of the times, unfortunately, we give problems you know, to we the give creation. Problems <laughs> To, you know, to, to, to the creation. So that's the third thing we're failing again. And number fourth, if number fourth was in us, presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then, you know, we would not be causing the havoc. So being in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the fourth objective is that always uh, having the mindset that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is hearing me, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is seeing me. That is presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we can just master this one item, then you would short circuit success. You would short circuit getting to success. And that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is seeing me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is hearing me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with me. If we can just master that, as I said, we can short circuit uh, our, our, our issues. So those are the four objectives. So where are the obstacles in trying to achieve those four objectives, my dear brothers and sisters? That is what I'm going to try and, inshallah, now focus you back onto, this, uh, onto the slide. So uh, you can see that now. Let me uh, bring up. Right, so, the, and, and to, so once we've achieved those four objectives, uh, then the, it will have to be with the grace and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Grace of mercy and uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we will achieve success. So, okay, so that's that now. Let's, uh, uh, and our ultimate aim is to achieve the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What I want to really get to is, I touched earlier on, on the four conditions. So I'm just going to bring those up, the four conditions. And those four conditions are, Brother Zafar? Basically having the belief of your deen, the tawheed, uh, the fiqh of the do's and don'ts, what we should be and should not be doing, the striving, making the effort in your deen, and repentance, constantly repenting for your sins. Okay, so those are the four conditions in order to travel this path of success. Okay, now, if we, again, just keep on the uh, slide, uh, just in the middle of the four conditions and the four objectives, you can see there's a big question mark. Yep. And under that question mark, as a matter of fact, there's a bridge. I'm going to just blow it up. See that? From the left to the right, there's a bridge we got to cross. However, to cross that bridge, uh, there's a question mark there. Why are we not achieving the four objectives? Well, the reason we're not achieving the four objectives is see where the question mark is. That is where the problem is. That is where we are stuck. Uh, so I'm just going to bring that up now to tell you where we are stuck. It's something called purification, self-purification, otherwise known as the ski nafs. That is what we are talking about. That is why uh, we are stuck and not achieving the four objectives. So what is involved in the purification? What is involved in Tazkiyah Nafs? There are four components. Okay, again, let me bring that a bit closer for the benefit of the viewers. Okay, in purification, the first thing is the body. We need to cleanse our body, our tongue, for example, our eyes, our ears, our hands our stomach, our private parts, our feet. So there are seven things in the body which we are causing havoc with. So that's, that's, that's one of the things we're going to be discussing in detail. Second thing from that, once we've sorted the body out, is the mind, the mind pattern, the thinking pattern. This is where we are causing havoc again with, uh, with our mind, shaitani thoughts. Once we've dealt with the mind, then we're going to go to the heart. And again, in the heart, we have things like hatred. We have things like jealousy. So all those things, you know, need to be uh, sorted and cleansed. We then move on to our soul. And once we achieve those three things, uh, cleaning our body, mind, and heart, inshallah, we will arrive at being uh, enlightened. Once we achieve those, now trying to achieve those four objectives, uh, my dear brothers and sisters, that then becomes uh, a piece of cake, inshallah, with the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It becomes extremely easy to achieve those four objectives. So where we're really stuck, you know, we're offering our salah, we're doing our fasting, we're in the month of fasting, 
We're going on Hajj and Umrah. We are offering our qurbanis. We're doing all these basic things, alhamdulillah, which we need to do. However, we're still not achieving the four objectives. And the reason, as I keep repeating, we're not achieving those objectives is this obstacle in the middle. What is the obstacle in the middle? The obstacle in the middle is myself. It's me. It's my body. It's my mind. It's my heart. Very little effort have I put on that in correcting and sorting that out. This is where the problem is. If one can understand or see the problem, then there's a good chance a solution could be found for it. And this is the topic we're really drilling home, self-purification, tasqiyya nafs. What, what we're going to do now is, as you, can, as you saw on the uh, screen, uh, just coming back, again, I just want to focus purely on the purification aspect. So as you can see, uh, okay, purification, you can see body, mind, heart. Those are the things we need effort on. And it's, it's the first part of that, which is the body. And in the body, there are seven organs which are causing havoc. We are going to now concentrate on the body, inshallah. So, Brother Zafar, I'm going to move on to the next slide, uh, where we want to look at, inshallah, what the body uh, is doing. And as I said, very briefly, I'm going to show you a slide in a minute. The body is causing havoc. The body has seven sensual organs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to not misuse them and to use them in a nice, handsome, wholesome, beautiful manner. Prophet wasallam has taught us to use them in a good way and not to use them in a shaitani way. The body has seven sensual organs. And I'm going to bring the screen up and show you those seven sensual organs. And we're really going to talk about that. So, uh, inshallah, uh, on the screen. Those, can you see there's a heart there? Now, attached to those heart, you can see there are seven sort of ways into it, seven pipes you could see. Those seven pipes, uh, it'll be interesting to show you what they represent. First pipe is the tongue. Now, if we use the tongue in a beautiful manner, then the heart becomes lovely and clean. If we misuse the tongue, then the heart starts to get rusty and blackened. Now, Brother Zafar, I'm going to blow this, uh, the sins which, unfortunately, we end up doing with the tongue. And th this is what we really want to concentrate on. So I'm just going to try and blow this up the, a bit if I can. The tongue, as we know, is one of the, one of the pieces of uh, body which doesn't have, uh, it's one of the smallest boneless pieces of flesh, but it creates the biggest amount of mischief and problems in our society. Many divorces between husband and wives have uh, sort of occurred simply because of the misuse of the tongue. And as you can see, there's about 15 to 16 sins just relating to the tongue. Before I embarked on this uh, self-purification course, if somebody was to ask me to list all the sins relating to the, uh, to the tongue, I would have actually struggled to even list probably half a dozen of them. Yeah, and yeah. now, just by it being sort of spelt out to me quite, quite clearly, and laid out the way it has uh, on the screen there for the viewers, you'll be absolutely shocked to see that how many sins we commit on a daily basis with our tongue. I mean, I'll just highlight a few of these. One of the biggest, uh, and the one that we all are engrossed in, myself included, I speak for myself, is backbiting. Something that we think it's so, it's so easy to do, we think it's such a sinless, harmless bit of fun to do, whether we're talking behind people to other people. Well, let me just mention backbiting is one of the worst, most biggest, major sins that you commit that darkens your heart. And a um, couple of interesting points, Brother Ramzan, relating to backbiting, yeah. uh, which, uh, which should uh, sort of open our eyes and give it shock us as regards to this particular sin. Backbiting is something of a very cowardly <laughs> act that Allah we do, Allah because Allah we say something about people behind their backs simply because we're not brave enough to say it in front of their face. Okay? Allah and the another couple of points relating to backbiting is it's a great act of jealousy and arrogance. Uh, if you're talking about somebody, either you are looking down upon them, 
That's why you're backbiting about them, and hence you are sort of uh, be, uh, acting in an arrogant manner. Or if it's somebody above you, you're jealous of them, they may have something that you don't, and that's one of the reasons why you are backbiting about them. So Allah Akbar. Quite it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's amazing uh, you know, the amount of uh, aggravation we get ourselves in without realizing to do with backbiting. I mean, uh, there's so many sins. I mean, where do you start from just relating to the tongue in terms of your, the, the, the false promises that we make, the lying? You know, lying now is, again, it's become part of people's character. Yeah. Every single day when we deal with business people, we deal with builders, we deal with tradespeople, lying seems to be their second nature. Yeah. Let me briefly run on the, uh, uh, on the, on the slide we had, uh, so my brothers and sisters can just focus for themselves as to where we are. So just to bring that uh, uh, screen uh, back again, again, uh, brothers and sisters, just, just look, on, look on that screen. You've got you know, uh, backbiting, cheating and slander, disclosing secrets, uh, singing, disputing, overpraising people, hypocrisy, useless talk. How much time do we spend in useless talk? Ridiculing, lying, uh, obscene and bad talk, false promise, excessive talk, uh, excessive laughter is something else you know, which we don't realize. It's actually detrimental to us. As a matter of fact, we're told that the heart weakens by excessively laughing, would you believe? Mm. So, you know, smile is, uh, is, is the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But uh, laughing with, you know, uh, 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 with noise coming out, then uh, it actually, we're told that it actually weakens the heart. Allahu Akbar, would you believe that? Mm. So, again, we want to uh, uh, move on. So, that was the tongue, my brothers and sisters. Let's now move on to the next item, just to go back onto the, uh, the, to the slide. Okay, next item you can see is the ears. Okay, ears, mm. I just want to focus on the ears again, try and blow it up just to okay. what is involved with the ears. Uh, again, quite self-explanatory. Uh, music, obviously a national pastime for many people. Uh, vain talks, uh, backbiting, again on the tongue side, if somebody's backbiting on the other side, there's somebody who's listening to the backbiting. Okay, mashallah. Uh, okay, I've just been informed that we've only have about five, six minutes, Brother Zafar, and time again, you know, uh, we're, we're only recapping uh, what we did, but uh, alhamdulillah. It's still good. Reminder uh, is good uh, for the believer. Reminder is good for the believers, alhamdulillah. Yeah. Okay, next thing is eyes. Uh, again, uh, very briefly, back onto the screen. Uh, you know, eyes, excessive looking at, uh, you know, vain, rolling material. Uh, looking at obscene magazines and newspapers, looking at films. unlawful films and videos, and gazing at the opposite sex. Uh, whether, you know, it's a man looking at women or women looking at men, again, you know, uh, the sins of the eyes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us protected. Again, I want to, you know, swiftly move through. Uh, the next item is uh, uh, hands. the hands. Again, uh, self-explanatory. Again, self-explanatory. Hands committing fraud, offensive gestures, touching a nahmeram, punching and slapping. We then move on to things like the uh, private parts. Again, private parts, committing sin with that is self-explanatory. Uh, moving on from that is our stomach, putting stuff into our stomach, which is unlawful, which is uh, uh, not right. Even, uh, even consuming can things lawful like things, even lawful things that we consume. Uh, if we overeat and eat excessively, that becomes a sin as well. Uh, detrimental to yeah. our health. Yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, of the seven things, uh, just to focus back on that slide, uh, I just want the viewers to get the seven um, organs. So what are the seven organs we need to purify? Tongue, ears, eyes, hands, private parts, stomach, feet. Okay, you might say, what, what, what do we create with our feet? Well, again, just focus on the feet. Entering anyone's property without permission, meeting a nahmeram, going to cinemas, going to vain places, going to pubs and clubs. Unfortunately, you might say, well, what's so wrong with going to cinemas? Unfortunately, most of the things you see in the cinema, are they suggesting, you, suggesting that you go to the masjid or are they suggesting that, you know, you go and do something which is not, uh, you know, good uh, for the deen, good for you? Unfortunately, most of the time, there's a lot of negativity in most of the films. 
a lot of you know obscenity in a lot of the films and a lot of bad language and all the rest of it uh, that, that that goes into it so these are the seven uh, bodily organs so you know first part brother zuffer of uh, us trying to purify ourselves is to sort our body out yeah okay in those in the body there are seven organs tongue ears eyes yep. hands private parts stomach feet okay now sorting these out all at once is not possible so what we have to do is we have to just take them one at a time so like how do we deal because the problems we've highlighted is nothing new we we need to give our viewers a solution of that, how what's to the solution in sorting this out now <laughs> solution we're just going to touch on my uh, dear brothers and viewers and in the next program inshallah we will be covering in detail but just to give you uh, an insight to the solution uh, i'm going to try and bring up uh, what the solution is the solution is that we have to take action and the action uh, I, i just want to on the on the screen bring this sheet up okay Bro brother zafar very briefly just touch on uh, how do we sort th this is to do with the tongue now for Again, example this uh, sticking to the bodily organs of how we purify our body we need to work on each organ one at a time if i say to somebody go and purify all your organs it's going to be a very difficult task to try and purify all seven bodily organs at the same time so hence we have a methodology taught by our uh, ustad and sheikh ahmed dabag where you take one organ at a time let's assume you start with the tongue and you're going to you will know the 17 15 16 sins that which we commit on a daily basis with our tongue all you have to do is just ensure that you spend one day at a time for free from these sins relating to the tongue and each successful day that you spend you put a tick against uh that day 1 day 2 day 3 day 4 you repeat the whole process and if you stumble upon a day where you have actually committed a sin unfortunately you put a cross against that particular day and guess what you have to repeat the whole cycle again <laughs> for 30 days you need 30 days clear basically you need ticks the whole 30 days yep. it might take somebody a month it might take somebody 3 months it doesn't matter So this is the solution We where you 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 just grab one of the organs i.e. the tongue because this causes the most mischief and you have a sheet and on one side of the sheet you have the number of attempts and across the top you have the 30 days and you tick every day when you've been successful and when you fail you put a cross and you come back to attempt number 2 for example and you start afresh Now time has really run away again uh we'll spend from more us. time in detail next what, week. What yeah inshallah we'll continue this next week but before I uh, finish what I want to focus uh, my dear uh, viewers on is I want to focus you on to uh, uh on, on, on focus you on to getting onto this website and this website uh I want to bring onto the screen so my brothers and sisters if you log on to this website www.prophetic hyphen path dot com you will learn all of the things in detail at your own leisure what we are trying to explain not only that here's the interesting part once you log on you can if you want be assigned a one to one teacher over the net uh, absolutely free of charge who will go through all this stuff at your leisurely time and give you help and support as and when you require it in order for you to try and purify yourself purify the organs purify the mind and the heart so inshallah we'll be continuing this uh we'll be continuing i'm told that time is up for this week inshallah we look forward to seeing you next week but get onto that website which i've just uh, uh, given you jazakumullah khair allah hafiz